In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I invite the congregation to kneel. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us make confession unto God, imploring his forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, our Heavenly Father, I confess unto thee that I have grievously sinned against thee in many ways, not only by outward transgressions, but also by secret thoughts and desires, which I cannot fully understand, but which are all known unto thee. I do earnestly repent, and am heartily sorry for these my offenses, and I beseech thee of thy great goodness to have mercy upon me, and for the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to forgive my sins and graciously to help my infirmities. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and for the sake of the sufferings, death, and resurrection of his dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, forgiveth us all our sins. As a minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you, who do truly repent and believe in him, the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Congregation may be seated. Due to the procession, I'm going to go ahead and have announcements at this time before the readings. And the first thing I'd like to announce is a word of thanks to the many persons who participated in getting us ready for our Easter egg hunt. We had 42 registrations. That's up. A uh, good portion from last year. We're rebuilding this event after COVID. Thanks be to God and thanks to all of you who took part in the preparation. Uh, also want to mention the Holy Week events coming up here. Uh, we, we are at the beginning of Holy Week. We've got Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. Remember the, uh, the service that we have at Greenlaw early on Sunday morning and also that there is the uh, breakfast, Easter breakfast between services here at the church. Be sure to invite to include your families and bring them out for Easter breakfast and for service on Sunday morning. Um, softball. We are going to start softball practice after Easter. And folks, it looks like we're coming together this year. The, the, there is a league forming. Uh, we have a coach, we have a manager, we will have a team, I believe. God help us uh, pull together on that, but uh, it's coming together well. Uh, also a new thing, well, it's not new. Uh, this is something Emmanuel used to do. Uh, there used to be a banquet each year for mothers and their daughters. And with the number of little girls that I've been seeing in our Sunday school, I want us to reintroduce this banquet. So we're looking at it, uh, we're going to call it Daughters in Christ, and looking at it the, probably the weekend before we have the uh, uh, Mother's Day observances. So be, be looking and listening for that. That is coming, and be planning. And it's, and it's for uh, all, all the women and girls of the congregation, okay? Daughters in Christ. 
Christ. Last of all, a note about the service. You're going to find that uh, after the offering, the offertory is not printed in the bulletin. Susie's going to play it, though. So be ready to sing Created Me when we come to that point in the service. And those are the announcements that I have for you today. Our Old Testament reading for Palm Sunday is from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning at the fourth verse. And this is a prophecy of the suffering servant that is fulfilled in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand together, who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me, who will declare me guilty? Here ends the Old Testament reading. Oh, oh, oh. 
Speak, O Lord, your servant is listening, prayed the little boy Samuel in God's temple, and the Lord indeed spoke to him. Thank you, choir, for sharing that word from the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 2, beginning at the fifth verse. And here the apostle is urging us to adopt the attitude of Jesus, which is one of humility. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends our epistle reading. We pray now our gradual responsibly. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Truly God is good to Israel. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from me? Our fathers trusted in thee. They cried unto thee. According to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. In this reading, the crowd is proclaiming Jesus to be their king and waving their palms as symbols of victory. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you. And immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them unto me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their clo cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Here ends the gospel for today. <laughs> We can 
confess the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things invisible and visible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sing our sermon hymn. Please note in the second verse there is a hallelujah. Replace it with Hosanna. Please be seated. morning is from the Old Testament reading, uh, Isaiah 50, focused on the 50th verse, the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. This is the word of God. Please be seated. 
Well, all around our globe, there are more than 100 radio telescopes. These are a special tool of astronomers. They're used for listening to radio activity way out into space. Each one of these things costs at least a hundred million dollars, some of them as much as a billion. And they can hear sounds tens to hundreds of thousands of light years out into space. Amazing ability to hear. And yet consider this. We go to all of that effort to listen to things so far away. How good are we at listening to the people who are right next to us? How good are we at listening to our God? Our sermon this morning is going to be about listening. And we're going to cover four points as follows. The first is about the Father's constant care for us. The second, about the Son's listening ear. The third, about our listening ears ourselves. And last of all, the servant's obedience as described by Isaiah. So first, about the Father's care, listen again to verse 4. The Lord God has given me a tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary, morning by morning. He awakens, he awakens my ear to those, to hear as those who are taught. Among our senses, hearing is only second to sight in importance for gathering information, for learning. It's so basic to communication, to be able to listen and to hear, to hear. Maybe you notice this weekend the roar of the wind <laughs> as it was kicking on Saturday. I was certainly here as we were outside playing with all those kids, grand time, but boy that wind was kicking. Maybe you noticed early this morning in the calm the singing of the birds, how sweetly they sounded their voice. Maybe you are even blessed to have heard today someone say, I love you. I love you. That sweet, sweet sound. How important is our hearing. Each time we hear a voice like that, each time we hear beautiful music as we've been hearing this morning, each time you hear that calm breathing of a loved one who is near you, Remember that that gift of hearing comes from your Father in heaven. And remember that He also is listening and hearing you. Listen again to what He says. Morning by morning, He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. Second thing in the, pro the prophet's words here is about the son's listening ear. Verse 5, the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I turned not backwards. Says a figure in Isaiah known as the suffering servant. The suffering servant. He's mentioned a, num a number of times in Isaiah's prophecies. Chapter 42, chapter 49, here in chapter 50, but most famously in Isaiah chapter 53, which describes the suffering of Jesus as he goes to the cross and shows us that that suffering servant that Isaiah is writing about is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who is listening, listening so carefully to the will and purpose and plan of our Heavenly Father as the Scripture describes here. I want to invite you to think about this. Think about Jesus at the tender, tender age of 12, sitting among the teachers in Jerusalem, there in the temple. They were talking about God's law and, and Jesus was asking them questions listening to their answers. And when they would answer, ask him a question, they were shocked at the understanding of this 12-year-old boy. 
how well he knew the word of God because of that listening. Jesus listening. Listening for the word of God. And we see this in Jesus' mature years, don't we? We have it pictured for us so beautifully right here in our window. I'm always pointing to this window. Where Jesus is praying, not my will, but thine, O Father, be done. Not my will, but thine be done. In other words, Father, I am listening and I am obeying your voice. And the obedience that he's asking for here is that the son would go and take up the cross and give his life for you and for me. Such is the obedience, the hearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, listening to the heavenly father for your sake and mine. So we know about Jesus' ears. Let's talk about our ears for a second here. How's your hearing this morning? Are you listening in today? Are you tuned into God like those radio telescopes tuned in to hear and capture everything your Lord is saying? We need listening ears. I was, I was pleased to have a phone call from my oldest son who lives out in Illinois here this week. And uh, he was telling me some news, uh, great news. He has been appointed to serve as one of the elders in his congregation. And I heard that and I was like, wow, wonderful. My, my son wants to serve the Lord in this way. And then I had this light bulb go on in my head as a dad well, and as a pastor. He's only 27 years old. He's about as old as I was when I started in the ministry. And this is what I said to my son. I said, when you get into the meeting, close your mouth. <laughs> and open your ears and listen. The older elders, they're going to know the families in the congregation. They're going to have an understanding that you don't yet have. Be patient and listen before you speak up. We all need that gift, don't we? Of listening. Listening to others around us. I want you to grab your bulletin for a minute and look with me at that lovely picture on the front. This is a Cranach. So one of the painters of the Reformation. And uh, this is a close-up on the painting. If you could see further to the right in the painting, you'd see the, the a picture of Jesus being crucified upon the cross. And then further to the right, you would see Martin Luther preaching and pointing to Jesus on that cross, preaching to the congregation. And look at the faces on the bulletin cover there. Look how intently they're listening to the message about Jesus. Notice the little baby down at the bottom of the picture. Even the baby is looking in, isn't it? And listening in. So beautiful. And yet, if you look carefully at the faces, you're going to see a few with their eyes going astray. And the ears tend to follow the eyes. There's a fellow in the upper left-hand corner there, and he's looking down. I bet he's looking at his cell phone. Right? Don't you think back in the 16th century? Uh, that cell phone is so distracting. Well, maybe not, maybe not the cell phone. But something is distracting him, isn't it? And then right in the middle of the picture, there's two young ladies who aren't looking up to the cross, who aren't looking up to the preacher, but instead, well, they're distracted, and one of them is looking right at you. <laughs> right out of the picture, looking at you. You, how easy it is for us to be distracted when our eyes need to be and our ears need to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. Think about what God did when he made your head and your face. He put the eyes at the front and the ears pitched to listen to the front, didn't he? Why did he do that? So we could focus. So we could focus and focus our thoughts on what's important and turn our back to the things 
that are not. God wanted us to learn how to focus like that radio telescope. Focus toward the heavens. Let your ears be focused toward the heavens today. The fourth point from the prophet is this. It's about the servant's obedience. Listen to what he says in verse 6. And remember that this is about Jesus, the prophecy of Jesus. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. This is a prophecy about what Jesus experiences during his trial time before he goes to the cross. The way that the people treated him because he was listening to his heavenly father and following in his ways. And that listening led to this suffering that Jesus experiences. The blow that the prophet mentions here is a blow that you and I deserved because of our sin. The disgrace that Jesus experiences is a disgrace that could apply and speak to you and to me. I'm not saying this to lay a guilt trip on you this morning, but to peek your ears into listening when the suffering servant, our Lord Jesus Christ, speaks up what he has to say. And that is why, folks, why we have this custom. You'll notice this. It's here in the Lutheran Church. Every place I've been in the world in Lutheran churches, we do this. When we read the Holy Gospel, what do we do? We stand. We stand and let that be a moment where you pitch your ears and listen for the voice of Jesus as he is speaking to you that very word of God. Listen as you come up here to the altar this morning and hear those words spoken with the sacrament given for you, shed for you, the very body and blood of Christ for your salvation offered here today. I'm going to end with this thought. It comes from uh, the time I spent this week reading with students over at Southwood School. And uh, I was doing a reading game with them. They were learning contractions. On one side of the board, there were cards that had the, the full uh, words, and the other side was the contraction. And the kids were supposed to turn them over Take note of where they were and then match, match up the pairs. It was a matching game. But this is what I saw the kids doing. <laughs> they, would, they would pick up a card and instead of turning it over so they could see it and so that their fellow student could see it at the table, they'd go like this. <laughs> and they'd get it up in their face and read it and put it back down and the other student didn't even have a chance to see or hear and the learning was going to be cut off because of that little behavior think about that this week think about the people around you think about what they need to hear what blessings they need to hear what's happening with others in their lives learn to listen to one another as you listen to Jesus, as you listen to the Lord our God, learn also to listen to the others around you in your life and to share with them that word of life. When you start listening, you might be pleasantly surprised at the good news that God will bring to your ears. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with our offering. <clears throat>
Lord, take our silver and our gold. Not a mite would we withhold. Take ourselves and we shall be ever only all for thee. Amen. <laughs> How are you today? Good. Good. I'm doing fantastic myself. I wanted to share this thought with you. You know what this thing is? It's a palm leaf or a palm branch. And this is what the, the children and the people were waving as Jesus was riding into Jerusalem. And this is what a palm branch would mean for them. I want you to see this shape. What letter would that be? V. It's a V, shaped like a V, isn't it? And let that remind you, as you see these palm branches, let it remind you of victory. That Jesus was coming to be our victorious Savior. That he was going to have victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil to take away our sins and to save us for himself. So when you see that palm branch, see the V and see the victory that we have in Jesus. Okay? Would you guys like to take a snack then? Have a look. There's, I think, fruit gummies in there.
Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it unto them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
our Lord, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith of the life everlasting. Depart in peace.
given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. And the Lord grant you listening ears and
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given it to them for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take likewise and drink the sin true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The true body and blood of our Lord, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
Gwen Bostick, Jack Ashcraft. We ask, O oh Lord our God, that you would touch these that we have now named, that you would bring your healing and mercy to their lives and to their bodies, strengthen them in both body and soul to rise up again, O oh Lord our God, and offer you their praise. We likewise pray for the family of Chuck Pyle, dear Lord, who has passed from this life into your nearer presence. Be with that family, O Lord our God, in their grief, and comfort them with the promise of the resurrection and everlasting life. We pray for the following households of Emmanuel, Proctor, Buscas, Ramsford, Rechtenwold, Reichenbach, Remy, Rhodes, and Richards that they would prosper in your care and guidance. We pray for families affected by the tragedy in Tennessee, and also the many affected by the tornadoes that have occurred around our land. O oh Lord our God, have mercy upon them, and turn hearts to call upon you in this hour of trial and sorrow. We ask all of these mercies through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Sure to greet one another as you depart, and we sing now our closing hymn.